morning. My name's Adam. I'm the youth leader here at Sherwood New Life, and you might be wondering where Pastor Larry is. Well, I asked if I could come out from behind the camera and give a quick message this week. And the reason that I wanted to do that is because we have students all over the, the nation that are celebrating a milestone. They're graduating. And so we wanted to take a moment and acknowledge that and give them a little bit of honor for the achievements that they've made. Some have graduated this last week. Others will be doing so in the next coming weeks. And we just wanted to make sure we acknowledged that. We've got uh, a couple of students uh, that graduated from our ministry this year. We've got Connor, who is Pastor Larry's son. Uh, he was part of the ones that graduated this last Tuesday. Um, and then we've got Hallie, who's uh, the granddaughter of a lady in our church, and she's come up through our ministry a little bit. And so we just wanted to say, well done. We're super proud of you guys, and you know, thanks for letting us be a part of your journey. And one of the things that I love about graduation season is that Everyone is so proud of the seniors. They're, they're so excited for the, the phase that they're moving into. They, they've accomplished a lot. Everybody's, um, they are, they're, they're showering them with praise. They're, you know, they're asking a ton of questions. Where are you going to college? What are you going to do next? Things like this. Um, and we've probably all remember those of us who have graduated, and I think I'm approaching 17 years or so, uh, almost to my 20 year reunion but i remember getting those questions that you know over and over what what are you going to do for a job have you declared a major yet you know and i'm like i haven't even you know even got my actual diploma from high school yet why are you asking me these things i don't know i'm 18 i don't know these things but we 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 get all these questions and you know it's it's fun sometimes um, even the teachers that we don't expect are super excited for us, and I don't know whether that's just because they want you out of their classroom and they're excited to not have to deal with you anymore. Hopefully that's not the case. Um, but, you know, in all seriousness, I just want to say congratulations to the seniors out there. Um, and most of the time, you know, during grad parties and commencement speeches, we get a ton of encouragement. We're told uh, that we can do the unthinkable. We can be world changers. We can achieve great heights. Uh, we, we can do anything that we want, really. And, and there, there's like no doubt in me with this generation and this generation that's graduating, like I see so much potential in, in this generation to, to do amazing things, not just you know out in the world, but for God as well. Um, but there's a question that I want to ask, and I want to ask this generation, what happens when you don't measure up? And, and really ask this to all of us. What happens when we don't measure up to what other people want or the dreams that we have? Um, what happens when we make a mistake or experience a major setback with, with the plans that we have right now? What happens when you procrastinate and you sleep in uh, and fail one of your college classes or, or you, you end up in a bad relationship and make a bad relationship decision? What happens when you make, make a bad decision with money or you know, do some, say something that you shouldn't have said? Um, what happens when your dreams don't turn out exactly like you thought they would, that your plans don't turn out? How do we get through that? Um, how do we navigate this broken road? And, and will our faith in Jesus stay intact through this? See, the truth that I've experienced, and, and we know this from the Bible, is that we will all have trials and tribulations. Uh, Jesus says it in John chapter 16 to his disciples. He says, in this world you will have troubles. And it's not a question of if you will have troubles, but more a question of when you will have troubles, when you'll have heartache, when things get messy. It reminded me of this conversation that I had with Connor back at the beginning of of uh, this whole COVID thing um, as they were beginning to cancel school and um, cancel all the different things that were happening. You know, we had this conversation of really feeling robbed and, and he wasn't the only one that I was talking to that was feeling that way. See, um, his senior year didn't turn out exactly how it wanted to. And, you know, and going into high school, he really wanted to play football and then the football team got canceled and uh, he was in choir and that ended up getting canceled. And so, you know, things were just kind of being pulled apart. He was part of our fine arts program here with the Oregon Assemblies of God. And for the last three or four years, he had been part of that and, and done stand-up comedy. And um, he did really well on his stand-up comedy the first year. Second year had a few hiccups. And, and then this was his year to redeem himself. But because of COVID-19, 
uh, we had they, they had to cancel the Fine Arts Festival, and so he wasn't able to do that. So that was just one more thing. Proms, other seniors, um, you've seen on, on Facebook and Instagram, you know, and different things. You, these things that they're missing out, these milestones, these these rites of passage that our seniors have missed out on, and and they're hurting because of that. Things have gotten messy, and everybody's kind of going, "What do we do now?" Um, my niece, she's a uh, fifth grader going into sixth grade. And, and I'm, besides just being a youth leader, I'm also a bus driver. And uh, the last day of school for fifth graders is something else. It's, it's one of the, it's really hard to go. And I'm a substitute driver, so I don't have a permanent route. I don't see the same kids every day. But you pull up to that to take the kids back home on that last day of school. And you can't help but almost join these kids in their tears. There, there's tears uh, between teachers and students who, may, they're going to different schools. They might not see each other again. They're not going to see these teachers again. And they've poured into their lives uh, for the last, you know, five, six years, depending on, or more if they've gone to preschool at that school and different things. And just, you know, it, it's, it's this sad but joyous time. And they call it the teacher clap out. And that's something with schools being canceled they don't get to do our, our coming sixth graders don't get to be part of that. And so, you know, my niece is just, she's upset about some of these things that she's like, these are things that we looked forward to, you know, the last two, three years as we started getting closer, you know, getting, I'm a fifth grader this year. I get to, I get to do these things and they, they miss out on that. And things may not go the way that we plan. They, but I find comfort in the fact that we were created by a creative God. Um, and, and he put that creativity in us. I mean, you look at the way that humanity over the last few months has adapted and changed in creative ways and to do things that normally we couldn't do. A lot of uh, high schoolers are doing, uh, high schools are doing drive-through graduations. Uh, where they're at my niece's school, they're going to do a drive-through clap out for the students, which while it may not be the same and it may not be have the same impact that it, that a normal one would have. At least it's something, and we're finding different ways to do things. The church, um, we've gone to this online online platform, and you know, finding different ways to do things. Uh, Sunday nights for youth group, we do what we call cyber church, and we have a Zoom call. We do a Wednesday night Bible study, both with the adults and the students, and and you know, we're finding ways. We're changing our perspective. We're doing things creatively, and. You know, it, it's one of those things that um, this pandemic it hasn't necess- it hasn't stopped us. It's just forced us to to take a different perspective. And and you know, as we're talking about things getting messy, and you know, we're encouraged to move on to greatness as we graduate. Um, we have to realize, and I believe this is that greatness isn't measured by the absence of fail of failure or the absence of messiness. Uh, greatness is is it's measured by the character that we form going through those things. If you turn to James chapter one, and this is something if you're if you're with our church any amount of time, you'll hear Pastor Larry talk about James chapter one. James chapter one verses two through three. It says, "Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance." But you probably already know that we'll face challenges when we go out into the future, don't you? And I think we all do because we're human. We know we understand these things. Isaiah uh, forty, uh, chapter forty, verse thirty says, "Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall." It reminds me of this this story that came out recently. Uh, the lead singer of Hawk Nelson. Uh, recently announced you know that he he had left his faith behind um, in an instagram post and and he tells this story of slowly fading from his Christian faith and he equates it to like the pulling of a thread on a sweater um, and in in his story that he writes he he describes being terrified um, at expressing his loss of belief and and what it could mean for him professionally and personally and you know if we read it correctly. Um, it almost feels as though he never felt free to express those doubts, to to raise, uh, to 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 talk with someone and have those conversations with people. Um, and when he did, you know, he, he would experience shock at the fact that people were experiencing these same doubts. And and you know, if if this is true, 
um, that not just him, but others were experiencing the same doubts. How, how many people in the church today are experiencing doubts as well? And, and how can we as a church ignore, ignore this? And um, Kara Powell and, and Chap Clark are two youth ministry moguls. They're giants in, in, as far as study of youth ministry and youth culture and all those kind of things. And they wrote a book called Sticky Faith. And in the book, um, they, they show that young people, often when they leave their faith, it's not because of, because of the fact that they have doubts. When they leave their faith, it's because of unexpressed doubts. Um, and be, believe it or not, I still have doubts. I still question uh, my faith sometimes. There are times where I'm uncertain in my faith, but my doubts and my questions, I, I let them drive me to push closer to Jesus and, and to find the answers and to rest in God's grace, knowing that I may not have all the answers, but I know he does. And I just have, and that's where my faith comes into play to say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm going to find the answers. I'm going to keep pushing into Jesus and, and what he has for me. Um, but that's nothing new. I'm not the only one who experiences challenge. And if you look around at the people that you admire, they face challenges too. The people that you seek to be like, this, when you grow up, you want to be like this person. Um, they still have their challenges. They still have their doubts and their questions. And, and, and they've been transformed through them. I think that's why we look up to them. Um, and, and because failure through Christ becomes a seedbed of greatness and strength through the transformation of our character. And, and basically what I mean by that is that when we have um, opportunity to fail in Christ, to ask those questions, to try things, and maybe we don't find the answers, but we go through these struggles and these, these messy times. When we do that with Jesus at our back, that becomes an opportunity. That's, that's like fertile soil for us to be able to grow and, and be planted. It's, it's, we, we get planted in that, that fertile soil and, and our character and our strength grows out of that. Will, and, and the question I have for you is, will you let your struggles and your doubts define you? Or will you let Jesus be the one that defines you? Going back to Isaiah chapter uh, 40, verse 30, I, I just want to go through a little bit more of that and give you some context on what it's saying there. And it says, Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Now, notice that this entire passage doesn't say anywhere in it that we will get away without challenges and trials and, and messiness in our life. We all grow tired. We all get weary. We all stumble and fall. We all experience setbacks and failures. And these are all a part of being human, uh, and, and we're not alone in this. Going back to the beginning, look at the book of Genesis towards the end of it. We, I mean, if you go through the book of Genesis, you see story of struggle as humanity goes from creation uh, through the book of Genesis. But if you get to the towards the end of the book, you see the story of Joseph who um, would have dreams and, and be able to interpret dreams. And God gave him a vision uh, of his future that he would be exalted and he would be in a powerful position. And his brothers didn't like that. So they would throw him into a hole, sell him into slavery. And when he gets sold into slavery, he ends up at a man named Potiphar's house, who's an Egyptian official. And his wife, uh, Potiphar's wife, tries to sleep with Joseph. And Joseph says no and runs away. But she then claims rape. And uh, Joseph gets thrown in prison. And he's left there for years and years. Um, he meets a cupbearer and a bread maker and interprets some dreams and helps them out. Um, to where the cupbearer gets out of prison and goes back to his old job and he forgets about Joseph. So Joseph's in prison for even longer. And and we get to this point where Pharaoh has this dream and he can't have he can't interpret it. His seers can't interpret it. They don't understand what it means. And the cupbearer goes, wait a minute, I remember this guy in prison, Joseph. So they bring him out of prison and he interprets the king, the uh, Pharaoh's dreams. And he gets put in this place of power to help out Egypt. 
um, while they're in going, going to go through these really good years of crop and surplus and all this stuff because they've got to prepare for this famine that's coming. And little J- Joseph, no, but his obedience and his, his uh, faithfulness to stay with God, even through these hard and messy times, ends up he, 17 years or so after getting thrown in that hole and exiled, his family comes asking him for help, and they don't recognize him, but it's not until, so he goes from being probably a 12 or 13-year-old boy to being almost in his 30s before he sees uh, the, the fruit of what God's doing in his life and gets to see his family again. Um, but it, it took him persevering through that and, and him growing and, and, and sticking by what God and being obedient to God. And we see, uh, if you go to the book of Job and read that story, we see Job is a man who's righteous in God's eyes and, and one of the most righteous men in, in all of the world. And yet he loses everything. And even through that, he still doesn't lose his faith in God. Now he does question and he asks God and he has his doubts and he questions God and God answers him. God's not not doesn't say you're going you're going to go away and you lose uh, your righteousness because you're asking these questions. He goes no. He gets down there and he and he answers the questions with Job. It's okay to ask ask these questions. God leaves room for doubts, but as long as we seek Him, as long as we talk to Him, He will answer us. Oftentimes, we lose our faith not because our faith was in God, but I think more often because our faith is in people. Our faith is in the church, uh, the body of Christ. And, and uh, Pastor Larry has said this multiple times, that if, if you base your faith on the church, if you base your faith on the people that make up the body of Christ, you will be disappointed. The church can't save you, and, and it was never meant to save you. Jesus Christ saves us. Um, Jesus Christ came to seek and save the lost. He's the one that died on the cross. He is the one that paid the price for our sins. See, the church was put together as a mechanism to share the gospel, to share the news of what Jesus did. The church was never meant to save people. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to doubt. But let's seek together to find the answers. Let's, you know, God loves us and he welcomes us all into, into his righteousness and he loves being in that mess with us. Um, so as we go through this messy season and as we enter these new phases of life and these new exciting seasons as you graduate and you go on to college or maybe you're at a new job or God's doing something new in your family and you're just in a new phase, we're all in this new place as stuff starts to open up. Uh, maybe we're finding ways to do old things in new new methods. Remember this word. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Don't let struggles define you. Instead, lean into Jesus and soar. I want to thank you guys. If, if, if you are looking and you have doubts and you have questions, please feel free to reach out to us. If you're a student, you can reach out to me uh, through our Instagram page, our Facebook page. You can go to our website and, and um, use our contact page to get a hold of one of us. Um, you can, if you if you want to, you can get a hold of Pastor Larry or Pastor Terry. Um, a really good place to get some of these questions answered is our Wednesday night Bible studies, where the adults meet at meet at six o'clock through Zoom. Uh, you can contact us for the password and the link to get into that. And same thing with the youth group uh, and our college students. We meet at seven o'clock on Wednesday nights, and that's a just an opportunity for us to go through and walk these questions together. Look at what does the Bible say about this? What does God say about that? Remember, you can still give online by going to our website and clicking on the Give Online button. Next week, we have BGMC, and I'm super excited to be a part of that. I love missions. I love supporting our missionaries. And please, if, if you... Um, we understand that that it's hard to, to give your spare change virtually, so you can go online and give that, or if you're saving it up to be able to give to that, please continue to do so, and we appreciate so much. I know our missionaries appreciate the fact that, that uh, we're saving and helping them out because they're oftentimes in situations that we can't even imagine on a normal basis, and this whole pandemic thing is just exacerbating those situations even worse. Um, But again, so next week, we're looking forward to seeing Buddy back there in the corner um, and hearing from Pastor Larry for Mission Sunday. And again, just thank you all for being here. Let's pray. God, I just just thank you for the opportunity to um, 
just be here and, and congratulate our seniors uh, to to love on them a little bit and let them know that we care about them and we see the struggles and the messiness that they're going through, God, but that uh, even in the midst of that messiness, you're right there with us, Father, and we just thank you for that opportunity. I thank you that as the rest of us, as we go through our lives and we're adapting to the new way of life or, or this and that, whatever's happening, God, struggles that may be older than the pandemic or maybe they've come out of that, Father God, you're there to walk through those things with us and we thank you so much for that. God, I just pray as we go through the rest of this week that you would keep us all safe, keep all of our eyes on you, and God, that we would feel the freedom to express our doubts and ask questions and really uh, seek and press into you to find those answers and in pressing into your word and, and going to believers who uh, and, and finding these questions together, God, and we just thank you for the opportunities to do that. In your name, amen. Thank you again. We'll see you all next week.